Hello everyone, my name is Radek and today I want to present you how to configure synoptic panels in SCADA LTS application. To make it more intuitive, we will work on the dairy company example. Imagine that situation where our customer has his own dairy center and he wants to monitor the amount of milk stored in his resources. He has the one place where all the milk is stored. This milk should be kept in proper temp temperature and should not cross the max tank volume. It is a very basic example, but I want to share with you just how to configure SCADA LTS application to work properly with Synoptic Panels module. So I will focus on this example rather than showing other things that could be also done like triggering the events when the maximum amount of milk is too high or too low. This imaginary customer has also two tank vehicles that are used to transport his milk to other distribution centers. Each vehicle must control the milk temperature, so it has advanced electronic devices that monitor the state of the transported milk and allow the driver to cool down the overall milk temperature. Now we will move from the user concept description to designing a SCADA LTS objects. To do that, we have to divide our customer company into smaller objects. The first one will be milk center, which will represent the customer milk container. We must monitor the amount of milk that is inside that tank. We need to measure its temperature, so we have two objects right now. And we need also to present somewhere current state of the valve. Now we have all elements from our milk center defined and we can move to designing a vehicle. We need to keep all the things from the main tank, so we will have the measurements of milk level and its temperature. Each vehicle has also its own pipe that can be plugged somewhere to empty the milk container. So we want to monitor this state too. This time the tank is exposed to weather conditions that can change the temperature of milk inside. To prevent that, drug has additional cooler that can help to keep the proper temperature, of temperature value. And we can control the rotation speed of this element. Now all components have been listed and we can move to the second step. We must choose the data types for all these elements that we want to store inside our SCADA application. The milk level and temperature can be treated as a numeric value, but the valve state can be treated as boolean because we want to handle on two of these states, open or closed. The same approach we can apply to the vehicle, but this time the cooler fan speed will be treated also as a numeric value because it will be representing the current rotations per minute. Based on that, we see that our dairy center, we need one data source with three data points that will be assigned to one synoptic panel, representing our configuration. We need also two additional data sources, one per vehicle, that will represent each track. All those elements will be converted into separate data points that will be placed onto individual synoptic panels. Now we know the design of our system, so we can move to the creation of synoptic panel graphics. To do that, we can use an Inkscape application that is free to use, so everyone can do it on his own. You can do the same thing using other vector graphic too, but you must remember about some requirements that must be met by your graphic. The elements uh, must you are designing must have proper names, but don't worry, I will show you how to do it soon. But now I will start with creating a milk container that will be, will be representing the customer tank. I add some additional circles uh, to provide some additional depth to our image. Ok, and now I will create our first component. It will be SLTS water level, component that will show the amount of milk stored inside the container. To do that, I will create a white rectangle that will represent the milk. So, I will name it using this SLTS water level keyword with the unique ID number. That is necessary for SCADA LTS because based on that ID, 
the application can assign specific behaviors to that SVG elements. We need to remember that SVG graphic has some rules how they work. This time, the only thing that we need to know is that the height of the object is calculated from the top left corner of the element. So if we want to create a tank that will be changing in height, we need to create another object that will be over our milk rectangle. I will change the color of this element to some shade of grey and it will be the tank background. These tricks allow us to change the milk level by changing only this background element because if there is no milk in this element, will be, this element will be covering all the milk rectangle. On the other hand, if the tank will be full, this element will have the high equal to zero because we must remember that rule that we are calculating the height of the element from the top in the SVG graphics. Next thing is our valve. In this case, it will be the small pipe symbol. To keep the consistency with general SCADA standards, we will add two triangles based on which user will know that this element is a valve. Again, we need to assign a proper name to our components. This time, the pipe will be named as SLTS valve. And because it's first of its type, we can start indexing from one. Based on the provided documentation, we must assign the background left and background right IDs to those triangles that we have just created. And the final step with this component is the text field that will be displaying the current state of this valve, because it may be opened or closed depending on the state of the data point. To do that, we just need to add the text field and set an ID with value suffix. Ok, we almost done this panel, but the only thing that remains is the value of the milk temperature. To do that, we will use the SLTS point component. This component requires, as always, the mine component ID, and in this case, the text field with the value suffix. But there is nothing wrong with adding an additional text field with the point description there. So I will create a label and now I will create the text field that will be used to show current milk temperature. Now everything is ready. We can save our work and move to the second screen. This screen will represent the milk track. So I will create the basic tank vehicle graphics. Ok, it's ready. Again, we need to use a water level component that will change the height of the one of the element to show the current milk state in this track. We will do the same step as we did in the milk center. Milk layer, now the background rectangle, then we need to name it correctly and everything is done. I will also create the valve component with status field. Ok, now I will present you the last one component that is already included in our SCADA, the fan object. It will rotate the base element depending on the value from assigned data point. We can also add the background element that will change the color depending on the state of the data point. We need to display the current value of the data point, so I will add the text field with value suffix to associate that element with that component. The last thing is to add the milk temperature point component as we did with the milk center screen. And now everything is ready, so we can save our graphic. When we have all the required files, we can move to the data source configuration in SCADA LTS application. In this video, I will present whole configuration done using only the fresh new user interface. We need to open the web browser, log into the SCADA, navigate to the UI and open the data sources tab. At the beginning, I will create three data sources based on the prepared system design. So the first two will be responsible for handling the vehicle data points. Because I'm only presenting how to configure synoptic panels 
I will create the virtual data sources that will simulate the behavior of the specific devices. When the data sources are ready, we can add that data points. For this scenario, the main milk tank can handle up to 5000 liters of milk. The vehicle data points will be configured to handle up to 1000 liters of milk. Rest of the components are created using approximated configuration that will be randomly generated. The exception will be the valve data points that will be changed only when user change its value. We can verify it by opening the data point page where we can see the complete list of available points in our application. The final step is the creation of Synoptic Panel. To do that, we should open the Synoptic Panel entry from navigation bar. We will see the blank page and using the plus button we can create a new panel. To do that, we must provide a name and in our case, we will set it to Dairy Center. Then, we must upload the Milk Center SVG graphic that we've created before. When everything is ready, we can create that page and using the select box, open the Dairy Center. The panel is loaded, but it has not been bounded to any data point. To do that, we have to edit this panel using the Pencil button. Now every component that we've created in our SVG graphic is represented here as a separate list item entry. We can expand it to configure a specific component. So now we can assign the milk level data point to the element called water level 1. I must also configure the min and max value for this component because the application must know how to map the current value to the rectangle high. I will assign also other data points to the existing components. Now, after saving, we can see the milk level and the current milk temperature. Also, the valve has green color with off-label, so everything works as we expected. Great! Now, I will create another panel that will be representing the vehicle view. I will set up name, upload the graphic, and set up every point. After save we can see that the second screen is ready. To check if everything is ok, we can configure the watchlist to monitor the first vehicle. We must open the watchlist page from the navigation bar. Then we must click plus button and in this configuration I will set up the watchlist name. Now I'm selecting data points that should be visible on that list and when everything is ok, I'm creating that list. Now the points with their values are visible and the charts has been loaded on the right side with historical values. To show how this update on the synoptic panels works, I will change the milk level value to about 500 liters. Now when I'm opening the panel with the first track, we can see that milk level has been changed. In the end, I will disable two data points to show how it is represented on the Synoptic Panel. This was the example Synoptic Panel configuration scenario. This feature and many other features will be available soon in new SCADA LTS version 2.7. Now the beta version is uh, available in our GitHub project site. Follow us to stay up to date with the latest features and changes. Thank you for watching.